an hour and a half long school days? So it just takes three years to complete grade 10? Wow. <laughs> Maybe not. So if you forget these laws, they're going to be on the beginning of the video. And what we're going to do today is practice some of them. So we'll skip down. Do, 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 do. All right. And once again, we really want to focus on the instruction words. We're going to get our quizzes back tomorrow. Our first quizzes, there was a lot of not focusing on the instruction words. And uh, this one says, simplify by writing as a single power. So that's the key thing. You've got to know what that means. What is a power? A power So a power has a base and an exponent. So now these are both powers, but I have two powers right now. And what we want to do is use our rules. Here we're going to have the same base. So what can we do with the exponents? Add them up. So you get 0 0.6 to the negative 5. Now, that's a single power. We've answered this question. That you could leave it like that. However, sometimes you'll run across the same question on a multiple choice, and it might be that 0 0.6 to the negative 5 isn't one of the answers. What, what could be another way that I could write this that might have been in your, on the multiple choice? Good. So you could use the negative exponent rule and say, oh, I know that 0 0.6 to the negative 5 is 1 over 0 0.6 to the 5. You don't always have to. There's some textbooks that will do that, make it always a positive exponent. But I'm just saying, in a multiple choice, then it might be that they write it like this. Could you write 0 0.6 as a fraction? Yes. What is it? Six tenths. Six tenths, and then in lowest terms, that would be? Three fifths. So the answer on the multiple choice might, look, might have looked like that. And also, I could change this to look like that. So if this was a long answer question, it's fairly straightforward. Here we go. We have a single power. But in a multiple choice, you'd also have to be able to manipulate to be able to see more than one way in case your answer doesn't appear. Yes, Hannah? Um, this is 6 tenths, 0 0.6 is 6 tenths, so if we have 6 over 10 and then reduce that, we could get 3 fifths. Write as a single power, same instructions. Right now we have a power to a power divided by a power to a power. So again, a power to a power, that rule says multiply. And 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And a power to a power here, give us negative 10. Oh, because when you have a negative fraction, you can have the negative in front of the fraction. You can have the negative with the numerator. You can have the negative with the denominator. It doesn't matter where it is. You can't have both of them negative because a negative divided by a negative is positive. So I did that without even thinking. 
It's not that I moved it, but it was a really good question because I'm just so used to dealing with a negative wherever it is. But it is important to realize you can put that negative anywhere. The negative in front, when it's in front, it's like a negative 1 times 2 sevenths, whereas the negative on the top is like the negative 2 divided by 7. But they're all equal. Now we're subtracting. What happens when you subtract a negative? You add. You could, although in this case I would deal with all my exponent laws first, okay. just because it's going to make life a little bit easier. And at this point, I've succeeded in what the question asked, because I have a single power. So I could leave my answer like that, and it would be right. You could do the negative and have it 7 over 2 if you wanted. That would be fine as well. If this question, I could give you this exact same question and change the instruction, and change the instruction to evaluate. This would still be a non-calculator question. So if it said evaluate, what would you do next? Because this would be done. This is done if it says write as a single power, but this is not done if it says evaluate. Very close. 49 over 4 is the final answer. Now, what did you do as your first step? Some people put the negative 2 into both of them. Is that what you did first? Some people, because of the negative, flip it and make it positive. Either way, we'll give you the right answer. Now, there's some important things to see here because you're going to be tempted with negatives. There's a difference between a negative in the base and a negative in the exponent. Okay? When you have a negative in exponent, it moves to the other end of the fraction, but the base stays the same. So when I move this negative 2 to the negative 2 to the bottom of the fraction, the base stays negative 2. This 7 moves to the top, becomes 7 squared. Here, I can just square the 7, gives me 49. A negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, becomes positive 4. That's the same answer if you had done it on this side, positive 4. Yes? Remember the pattern thing that we looked at? When we, when we looked at 7 cubed and what number that is, that's a big number, 343. Um, 7 squared being 49, 7 to the 1 being 7. And the pattern we see with the exponents as I go down, I'm going down 1 by exponent each time. So the next one will be 7 to the 0. And the pattern that's happening on the right-hand side is I'm dividing by 7 each time. So if I keep that pattern going, dividing by 7 explains why that something to the power of 0 is 1. And if I keep going by subtracting another 1 on my exponent, I divide by 7 again, I get 1 over 7. And dividing by 7 again gives me 1 over 49, which happens to be the same as 1 over 7 squared. So we recognize that with a negative exponent, what happens is that value gets moved to the other part of the fraction. Yeah, as we're going, as I'm going this way, it's like dividing. And I keep, I keep dividing by 7 
and that keeps adding more sevens on the bottom, which is what the negative exponent law does. Okay. What's that? Go back to this one. 40. So if the question says evaluate, you would get 49 over 4. If the question just said write as a single power, you could leave it like this. So you have to be able to read those instructions and understand what it means. This is foreboding for when we get our quizzes back tomorrow. So this one's just simplify? This is says, again, all these first ones are simplify and write as a single power. I'll just put the answer up for this one in a bit so you can check if you are able to get it. And if you are unable to get it, then you're going to ask me and I'll come around and help you see where you made a mistake. If you don't want to look, I'll put it in the corner so you don't have to look at it. I guess I don't need brackets. I want it looks ugly with brackets. I'll write this so you can see it better. 9 to the negative 1 quarter times 9 to the 5 quarters divided by 9 to the 3 quarters. And I'll write the answer in the bottom here. Well, that doesn't look like any number. And if you get that answer, your challenge is to show why that's the same as the square root of 3. The bottom here. How many people were able to say, well, I know that it's equal to the fourth root of 9? OK, that's a good start. Right? We know that we can change things from fractional exponents to radicals. That still doesn't say why it's equal to square root of 3. Start with 9 to the 1 quarter. Would you agree that 9 is the same as 3 squared? Does that make sense? that I could change 9 and write it as 3 squared? Yeah. And then what can I do with 3 squared to the 1 quarter? I can multiply those, right? That'll give me 3 to the 2 quarters. Does that help me? Did that square root is equals 3 over 2, which is equal to 3. Not quite. Okay. Yeah. All right, next example. As soon as Catherine's ready. Are you ready? Okay. No, I'll always go back. Now, this one says simplify. So you need to write this in its simplest form. Well, that's, that's part of the hard part, right, is knowing when to stop as well. <laughs> Simplify this one. Both of those are fine. I prefer writing it as a single fraction because later on in mathematics it's going to be nicer if you are working with a fraction like that rather than having a fraction in front. Well, 8 over 12, 
is a fraction that can be simplified because they both can be divided by 4. So that's how I would get the 2 thirds. Well, now my x's, I have the same base, so I can subtract the exponents. And 8 minus 5 gives me x cubed. I can also see that I have more x's on the top of my fraction than I do on the bottom. There's th gonna, if they would cancel out, there's going to be three more on top left. Okay? And if you expanded this to y cubed being y, 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 and y to the seventh being y, 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 then if you cancel out, you would be left with four y's on the bottom. That's where it's going to end up. Yeah, for sure. But it is using your exponent laws as well. Like This answer is really using exponent laws. 8 minus 5, 3. 3 minus 7, negative 4. This way is just looking at the fraction. Where do I have more if they cancel out? I'm going to have four more on the bottom. Well, when we look at the original question here, when we look at the original question, we got more x's on the top. So after they cancel out, you're going to be left with some x's on the top. And I have more y's on the bottom, so after they cancel out, I'll be left with y's on the bottom. Then you would have the negative 4, right? Yeah. So there are different ways. Both, both those answers are correct. I prefer the one that's circled in red, but both of them are fine. So some people put the three halves through each step. Some people just put the half through first. And they kept brackets and said, I'm only putting the half through. I'm going to keep my three out. And if I put the half through, half, 25 to the half is the same thing as a square root. So then that just becomes 5. Half of a to the 4 becomes a squared. Half of b squared becomes just b to the 1. Okay. On the blue side now, if you cube everything, 5 cubed is 25. a squared cubed is a to the 6 and b cubed at the end. If you did it in this one, you've already got your a to the 6 and b cubed when you simplify those fractions. 25 to the 3 halves, you have to think that that's the same as 25 to the half cubed. And 25 to the half is the same as square root. Square root of 25 is 5 and 5 cubed is 125. What makes me happy when I come around and see the different things that you're doing, like I've done so many of these, I'm just so used to working with fractions, I just put the three halves through right away. And I worked on the left hand side. I really like the elegance of, of not putting the whole three halves through and just putting the half through and seeing how that simplifies it right away. Yeah, I can go back. It looks evil. <laughs> this is the end of the unit. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that Friday won't affect you guys, but there's Remembrance Day ceremonies. If all of a sudden they put it in the afternoon, and it, they say that there's a Remembrance Day ceremony in the afternoon, which I don't think they'll do, and it affects this class, then we'll have to move our test to Thursday. Okay? The other class is almost for sure having to do their test on Thursday. After this unit is linear relations, and linear equations comes after that, so we start dealing with situations with lines. A little bit. All right, here's the next one. Graphing is coming up next.
second last example. And then the last example. <laughs> So the 12 divided by 3, that will give us a 4. Our x's have the same base. What is the rule for dividing with the same base? Subtract the exponent. So I'd have a negative 5, and then I would subtract a half. Okay. Same thing with the y. I'd have 5 over 2, and then I would subtract a negative half. Subtracting negatives like adding. How do you subtract fractions? Right, you need a common denominator, and 5 is like 5 over 1, right? There's not a common denominator there yet, so you have it as 10, negative 10 over 2 minus 1 over 2. Can you see where I got the negative 11 over 2 now? And here, you're going to be adding, so I'll have 6 over 2. We already have a common denominator. So that's how I'm going to get my 11, negative 11 over 2, and how I'm going to get my y cubed. What's that? Terminology. Well, and that's that is something that's important. Like, for example, with factoring, with factoring, we have learned four kinds of factoring. Can you name them for me? Right. It's hard if you don't take the time to learn the terminology. You don't give yourself a structure of which to learn these things. Okay? We did factoring by greatest common factor. That's what you should always look for first. Then there was trinomials. Right? In trinomials, there was grouping. There was also perfect square trinomials. And there was the ones where we just put the brackets right away. So that under trinomials, you have three sort of subsets under that. Then we also learned how to factor a difference of squares. If you have those titles in your mind when you're doing a question, you can see it quicker which thing you need to do. So part of learning the math is learning the te terminology, even though you never have on a math test, what is a common denominator? Please explain in a three-page essay. That would be nasty. Five over x, y to the three halves, or you could have five x to the minus one, y to the negative three halves. All right. Okay. Again, there are many different options that you could go and do here. I would suggest if you can simplify in the brackets first, it'll make your life easier. What is 50 divided by 2? 25. X squared over X to the 4 will leave you with X to the minus 2. Y4 over Y7 would leave you with Y to the minus 3. Or if you were thinking of 
simplifying and just saying where are there more x's. I have 50 over, 2 is 25. There's more x's on the bottom, so I would have x squared on the bottom. There's more y's on the bottom. I'd have y cubed on the bottom. Both of these are still both to the power half. Now, if I put that half to each and every one of them, 25 to the half is 5. x to the negative 2 to the half is x to the negative 1. y to the negative 3 to the half would be y to the negative 3 halves. Or if you did it on this side, 25 to the half would be 5, because that's just the square root. x squared to the half would be x, y to the 3 halves. The hardest way to do this one is put the half into everything to begin with. If you did that, it's not wrong. It'll just be a lot harder. Did some of you do that? 50 to the half, x to the square to the half. Yeah. You just have way more math to do. Whenever you can simplify something earlier, it usually bodes well for you. So in this case, I, simplify, I could see that inside the brackets I could simplify. That makes my life easier. Okay, that is it. Here is your homework. We have 15 minutes to work on that.